All right. Little Yacht Rock. We are on. Man, loving some Yacht Rock. It's early May, and we've got the Yacht Rock. I didn't even know this was a thing. It's, it's an awesome so, thing. This is Collier's New Deal. I love Yacht Rock. Have you guys heard of that? Yacht Rock is where it is. We all, we got the, we got volume and everything. We're good. Oh, we're good. We're good. I mean, just look at that. You make my dreams. Daryl Hall and John Oates. Hall who, does, who does not look? Hey, look who's here. It's there Courtney Harvey. Cassie Mingle, Courtney. Hey, and then here's the next one. Hey, there's Marcus. Marcus probably knows uh, Yacht Rock. Little Benny and the Jets. Uh, Benny and the Jets. I mean, just yeah. good stuff. You can't beat that. So this is a, a classic uh, uh, what graduation from uh, cruise ship to now a love of yachts and yeah, yacht love of yachts. I'm 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 working my way up. Yeah. And by the way, since Cassie's in Minnesota, you know who qualifies in yacht rock? Prince. Prince. Hey. I didn't even know this was a thing. Absolutely. But little darling Nikki. Hey, look, Sarah Stanford. She what did she do today? Trey Favors in. What happened to Sarah Adams today? What happened? Her appraisal came back. Yeah. Boop. We got an appraisal, Sarah. Absolutely. We got a little Boz Skaggs. So anyway, that's the Yacht Rock that uh, Collier is uh, Yeah, I'm addicted pretty to hot it. On. Yeah. Now, Trey, I'm sorry. I got the Brinks truck today and not the Trey Favacuzzi. <laughs> sorry, buddy. Yeah, that is, that's, that's cold, man. Hey, it is cold, but it's cold to Trey. I know. I hey, and I, I'm representing. You know what I got on? Yeah. I got my... You got uh, the, the new Mortgage Bank Golf shirt's out. Yep. If everybody can see that. Yep, right here. Represent. I feel like I'm a NASCAR driver. That's right. He's got his sponsor sponsor on the left. Yep. Got a fresh haircut uh, from... Uh, I saw that. Tiffany Pilateri at... Uh, Were well, you the high dollar The mail room. The mail oh. room right over here in... Uh, the mail room. Inverness. That could be Inverness. dangerous. If, I, if you told me you were going to the mail room... Yeah. I'm just saying. To, not to get mail, but... Yes. There's Jason Grantham, War Eagle. Jason, hope you're doing well over in the big... You're in Atlanta, I believe, so hope you're doing well. Great guy. Awesome. Um, well, hey, uh, we're, we're going to jump into real estate in a minute, but, you know, obviously we, we like to talk about a few things. Uh, have you heard about this movie pass? Uh, I'm not big on the movie pass, but it sounds exciting. What is yeah, it? I mean, you know, I know a number of people. I've been looking into it. It's uh, $9.95. You pay this company nine ninety five. They send you a little debit card, and you can go to one movie a day, every day of the week, every day of the year. You just can't see the same movie twice. And everybody five a month, absolutely. And so they're saying, you know, good deal. They tried to take the terms back, and it became not a good deal. They said for a little while you could only see four a month, but now they're back. I don't see how their financial model is going to make it, but hey, it's getting to be real popular. That's a movie every day. That's a movie every day. But hey, it's a good deal if you like movies. Yeah. I mean, nine ninety five. Jeez, Louise. Mark has it, of course. Oh, of course, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he didn't even go, but he, he thinks it's a deal. The Walmart lunch guy with the with yeah. yellow tags. Absolutely. Yellow tags on the All right, is... Gerald Arnold, how are you? Just bought a new car. Hey, he's rolling the new stuff. He texted me earlier today, said he bought a, what? Did you buy a Mercedes, BMW? What What you get? There's the uh, governor in uh, four years, Howard Cannon's here. Good to see you, Howard. Uh, but let's talk about Warren Buffett. You know, they just had... Uh, in, back out in Omaha, he had his annual meeting uh, yeah, for amazing. Berkshire Hathaway. Amazing. Those Berkshire Hathaway shares now, what, $300,000 each, right? Man. Awesome. Just crazy. There's Toto. Hey. there. Hey. He's talking about a little Toto. You know. Uh, oh, David, I appreciate that, man. That's the only reason you haven't deleted Facebook. This, this is it, man. This is I mean, it right here. Who doesn't love the happy hour and yeah. a little lining kugel yeah. summer shandy? He can't, he can't do Absolutely. that. Absolutely. All right. Hey. But one of the things, you know, I took back, I, I texted you the other night that, you know, I hadn't heard this quote out of him. He was repeating a quote he said earlier, and he talked about this. He said, this is Warren Buffett. He said, good habits are more important than being smart. So good habits, more important than being smart. Well, that's definitely true. I mean, you can see that uh, in business and in sports, right, with hustle and effort. Um, you know, I talk to my kids about this all the time about, I mean, it doesn't take any talent to try hard. And I think that's the... That's the same. It was same the same premise, and he yeah. and he, you know obviously he's equating it to how we live our life from an investment standpoint. Maybe, you know, you know. I mean, he 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 was talking about, it and he said, you know, that uh, you got to start somewhere in your savings. 
The problem is we're always waiting till tomorrow because we it's not fun to get in that habit of saving. Exactly. And same thing with real estate investing or you're into the stock market, those type things. I mean, we can look at all our buddies. Yeah, yeah. You know, and how they behave. There's some of them are just fly and I think, by the seat of their pants. And I think some people some people look at savings and starting off as you know, it's just it's not that much. Like why would I why would I do fifty bucks a month? I mean, where's that going to get That's not going to get me anywhere. Yeah, that's not going to do anything. And it does take the, a lot of time with that little bit of effort. But this this note you got here is interesting. Yeah, I he mean. He started off with very little. Yeah, I mean, started out, this is something he talked about. Warren Buffett said he, you know, he made, a, he sold Coca-Cola when he was about 11, year, 11 years old, I believe. And he made $114. And then with that $114, he bought his first stock. Now, he didn't buy the S&P 500, right? But had he bought the S&P 500, some kind of indice, and then reinvested his dividends, he would have $400,000 today. Now, $114 then and, and today is different. Yeah, but it's still have. not a lot of money. Yeah, and relative. that had to be probably 70 years ago? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you're talking about compound interest over 70 years. Obviously, that's a long time. But, I mean, as the years go by and you keep putting these goals off and you keep putting the tasks off, that 100 bucks a month or, you know, a bonus check every now and then yeah. that you want to put back and say, wait, well, in 10 years, you could have done it 10 years ago. Well, in 20 yeah. years, you could have done it 20 years ago. Absolutely. Right? So, so starting as soon as possible, letting that stuff grow. I think is the big message there, right? I think I think it's a huge message, and I also think I love what he says: "Don't save what is left after spending; spend what is left after saving." In other words, pay yourself first, right? You know, uh, yeah. and somebody's commenting on your haircut. Yeah, that's Brady down in down in Montgomery. He's my buddy. Hey, yeah, he and went. Then, to, it, and then you didn't, you didn't want to read Sarah's comment. Uh, I, I don't read that that those type comments. Uh, Call your can't pronounce roll tide. Sarah, yeah, Sarah Adams, big Auburn grad. But I went to Georgia Tech, so I'm, uh, I can. I can yeah, so he that. loves the Bulldogs. Anyway, moving on to our, let's talk real estate. Let's do it. All right. So, big question was about mortgage insurance and the different types of mortgage insurance. I mean, what is mortgage insurance? Basically, it is a fund that um, that you pay into as a borrower that protects lenders from default. Okay, so uh, it's kind of like a big pool of money. It's just like any other insurance. It's a big pool of money, and you still have to participate even if we feel like you're a great candidate to make your payments on time. It's because if you're paying less than 20% down on a conventional mortgage, we've got to have the mortgage insurance. Almost any conventional mortgage. Yeah. Now that I mean, is any called, conventional mortgage without 20% down. Yeah, and, and that is called PMI. Okay. Okay, which is private mortgage insurance, which applies to conventional loans. That means that we get a private mortgage insurance company to come in and write that. They get the premiums and then they pay out if the loan goes bad. Now, the difference is in MIP, which is mortgage insurance premium on an FHA loan. Now, you have upfront mortgage insurance of 1.75%. And not to get too lost in the details, but you also, you got upfront and monthly on the FHAs. So on FHA, we've got the monthlies, which are for the life of the loan. The monthlies never go away. The monthlies stay there forever. On an FHA loan. Okay. Okay. Now on a conventional loan, and one of the big uh, questions is, is when does it go away? How do I get rid of it? Now the monthly mortgage insurance will automatically cancel once you get to 78%. Based on what? Of the original value. Okay. So is that the original... Uh, appraised value or is that the original sales that's price? That's the purchase price. Okay, so that's why an appraisal can come back in and help us here down the road, right? Down the road. Yeah, that's a whole nother thing. But let's just talk about this for a second. So 78% of original value okay. would automatically cancel. Now, if you get below 80%, you can call and request it as a borrower, but we're still talking about original value. So what are the situations, the other examples, like you're saying, so let's say you uh, you put $50,000 in the home, the value goes up, or in some strange markets, we have a lot of appreciation, then... <laughs> I like those, I, I, I like those markets. Yeah, of course. Um, Melissa, War Eagle. So if that happens, then you can request it from the lender okay. to get an appraisal done. Now you still have to pay for two years. Okay. 
Okay. You still, so you still have to pay for two years. Now, see, that's something I don't think a lot of folks know. And quite frankly, I was not. I haven't been in the business a long time. And, I, you know, so you're, what you're saying is that the, the PMI, you can't do anything for two years. Right, right. There's going to be, it's going to have to be very extenuating circumstances for you to do anything in the first two years. Okay. Most of the guidelines are that you have to pay for two years. Now, you got a comment about refinancing. You can still refinance in less than two years to get rid of the PMI if it makes sense, but you're probably not going to refinance to the same interest rate just to get rid of mortgage insurance. You probably want a better interest rate and get rid of the mortgage insurance. So that's an option. Otherwise, if you're in your original loan, we're sticking with the mortgage insurance for two years. Okay. And then um, you can get a new appraisal done. You can get the valuation done to calculate whether or not you're below that 80% mark and whether or not the lender will drop it. One of the things, I, you know, as I was researching for this is a something that I came across called a PMI canceling refi. Is that just a sugar-coated name for a that regular is, refi? Man, that is what I love in this business, which is just mortgage terms, and they're, they're just fancy. It's marketing. I'm sorry. It's mortgage marketing. <laughs> These are just fancy ways to say things to get the phones to John ring. John McMillan. Uh, this business is really easy and simple, but there is no PMI canceling mortgage. There's no so such thing? if you ever hear that, just call them and laugh at them and then hang up. So everybody should be laughing at me is what you're saying? Well, I just said it. You found it online. Yes, I did. But, and that's 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 innocent. As Corey Smitherman said, smoke and mirrors. Smoke and mirrors. That is classic smoke and mirrors. Yeah, that's just like the uh, 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 no out-of-pocket, hold on, let me get, no oh, out-of-pocket closing costs. You're still paying them. You see, you, you you are. Yeah. Absolutely. Unless you get a lender credit yeah. for the exact amount, you're still paying the closing cost and they're taking it out of the equity of your house that's still your pocket, right? And so they call that two years a seasoning requirement, right? Is that what they call yeah. it typically? Yeah. Yeah, it's a seasoning. And, and what is the reasoning in your mind why they require two years? I think, I think they're just trying to guarantee some income on it because they're taking a risk on the loan. Uh, Who is? The insurance company? Yeah, yeah. And the lender... Uh, so to speak, because the lender's taking a risk on a higher balance. And one of the reasons I like the mortgage the, the mortgage insurance is because it's letting you put less down. You don't have to come to closing with 20% down anymore. Maybe you've got, uh, uh, maybe, let's say 20% is 100000 but mm -hmm. maybe you could get away with, with a lot less. So you could put some of that money somewhere else and do something else with it. If you're borrowing money at 4 and a half, 5 percent you know, and putting less down, then you can either, I think some of the, some of the, Big things to do, right? The first thing is the emergency fund, three to six months worth of savings. Mm -hmm. If you don't have that set up, then you do not need to be putting twenty percent down. Uh, and then the next step in investing, anyway, would be maybe ten thousand dollars in an index fund, mm -hmm. right? Oh, so absolutely. I think if you if you don't have a couple of these things already set up, if you don't have any four hundred one k, no retirement, there's no reason you should be putting twenty percent down. Don't put all your cash into the house. <laughs> hey, by the um, way, her husband makes a mean. Potato mean salad. potato salad. It's incredible, but but that's some of the benefits of the mortgage insurance. Well, let me, but I you know I want to go back to that though. Is that you know we go back to two thousand eight before two thousand eight when the uh, the stuff hit the fan, yeah. if you will. You know what's funny is that all we heard on the news was oh the banks are getting drilled right. The banks didn't take the brunt of it. Who did? Who took the brunt of it? The first twenty percent. Of all those loans, and that was a lot of times was that mortgage insurer. Yeah, a lot of a lot of times the mortgage insurer took the took the hit. The consumers took the hit. Banks lost a lot of money. I mean, the whole economy almost collapsed. So everybody yeah, almost right. took it on the chin. But you know, going back to your point about the two years, I, th I think they're just trying to guarantee some. Mm -hmm. That kind of keeps the rates down, right? So if I'm guaranteed for every policy I write, I'm at least getting X amount of money, right? right. So I'm guaranteed that two years. Then, then that can help with the premiums and keep the did you keep those see, rates low. Did you see rates from 08, or let's say before 06, 07, not that they really cared at that point, but did you see rates increase based on the fact that they paid claims? No, and I think no, I think rates are, are comparable now. Percentage-wise. Yeah, yeah, to where, to where we've always been. And now there is, there, there is more um, risk-based pricing on the mortgage insurance. Um, so it's which still means, credit. Which means credit, um, down payment, things like that will get you lower rates. Right, right. And now, for the average consumer, can they shop this or do you shop it for them? Yeah, we shop it. We shop it for you uh, here at our type of a company. 
a lot of big banks and things like that have agreements with these mortgage insurance companies where their rates are kind of fixed and they don't really shop the mortgage insurance. And are you, are you talking big monster mega banks? Is that what you're talking? Yeah, I'm talking about big local banks. Uh, most 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 of your big banks, yeah. Right, right, and, and and things that have rocket type mortgages. I'm not sure about how they handle <laughs> their mortgage insurance, but uh, uh, I'm sure they do the same way they do their loans: over promise and under deliver. That is more than likely the case. Um, hey, Jenny Williams made it. You see, Jenny? Yeah. Yeah, bring her on camera. I'm That's just right. Kidding, yeah. Jenny. Just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> Hope you're dressed. Um, um, so so yeah so. Canceling. Prepaying it. What about prepaying it? Now, prepaying it. Now, we do have some great lender paid options. Okay, lender paid mortgage insurance, borrower paid mortgage insurance, where you can pay one premium. Uh, oh, the yes. ladies are loving your voice. Gentry. I haven't seen her in a long time, but I do see the posts on there. I see she's doing well. So tell her I said hello. You're um, like Barry White, apparently. Like the ladies love your voice. Well, you know, I did the radio show with Jenny years ago. You did? That, that's where I. Yeah, but you, they said you fell asleep half the time. Yeah, well, that might have been true. It was early. It was like 6 a.m. Yeah, it was, it was on a Saturday. I mean, yeah. that was tough. Yeah, so the beer was out of the question. Yeah, that was tough. Yeah, you gotcha. But that's when Jenny started with my radio voice, and uh, that, that, was, that was a while right. ago. So where are we at now? No, we were uh, talking about refund, paying, re prepaying. Okay, so you got the lender paid, which is great. It builds into the rate, um, depending on your down payment. If you're at less than 5 you know, 3 to 5% down, a lot of times that lender paid is going to be a better option now 10 percent down or more definitely 15 percent. you want to go monthly mortgage insurance because it's going to fall off uh 10 down i'd even recommend the monthly because maybe you can make a little extra payment every month and get rid of that sooner mm -hmm. uh but the the single premiums are are attractive um uh, and we just got a call uh i think it was this week that some of those borrower paid premiums up front are going to be reduced yeah yeah and i had a case yesterday uh that was talking, Mark Wood, how are you? Um, had a situation where it really was, the person's credit was so good, because you were talking about risk-based mortgage insurance, that we, me and the lender were talking, uh, they already had a relationship, by the way, um, but they were talking, you know, they were thinking, oh, we're gonna have to do the lender paid, it was gonna be a lower monthly premium, but it was a rare exception, where the credit was so good that it was not a better deal. But it was a rare situation because most times you and I have seen where that lender paid is going to be the best option. Yeah, but, and how much were they putting down? Uh, three or five, one okay, of the Okay, so the lender was probably looking at that incorrectly. I'll just be honest with you. I don't know. I'm just kidding. I'm just, yeah, <laughs> I don't know. No, but, but uh, it was a true story. Uh, uh, no, but talking about that, though, is it's yeah. very important that we're not rate only. I mean, I can't. I, I can't tell yeah. you big enough. Hey, that look. is not the Yeah, look, all. anytime you get under less than 20% down mm -hmm. payment, uh, e even with even with playing around with the fees and stuff, if you're only going to be in the house five, six, seven years, you know, it, it might make sense to do things differently. So, yeah, that interest rate is just the, the start. I mean, we've got the interest rate, the mortgage insurance, uh, the, the term of the loan, how long are you going to be in it, the closing costs. We've got so many variables in there that... Yes, a lot of people look straight at the interest rate, and it's so funny. I saw a, a, a rocket mortgage commercial, and they were making fun of a loan officer on the on the phone talking about origination fees and this and that. And it's like, well, yeah, you make fun of people doing that because y'all don't explain them. Y'all just charge them up and, and, and roll with it. Right. Wait till they, they figure it out. Wait till the borrower figures it out. Well, you know, one thing. I'm just I, kidding. Uh, no, that's pretty funny. Well, uh, w one thing that I have taken away already from this is that when folks go, you know, you take somebody like Gentry Williams here who is just now starting out in real jobs, coming out of college age, right? When they come out of college, the importance of keeping that credit record clean as you can and as high as you can from a very early age. I heard in your comments three things that will be affected with bad credit. Your interest rate, your rate of your PMI, which is a totally separate issue, and then your homeowner's insurance. So in other words, not, bad credit equals you're getting screwed left and right and left and right. Yeah, and I, I tell you, the, the, the mortgage insurance rates are affected a lot more than the interest rate that you're going to get. So, so yeah, you can, you can get hurt a lot. Your credit score can hurt in you a words, lot. In other words, my future insurance. is affected from a it, from very early in this yeah. process, my first time home buying, right? The less I'm paying down and less disposable income I have because I'm paying higher premiums yes. and 
everything. Absolutely. Which, you know, I, I kind of have a problem with the way mortgage-based insurance, because it doesn't mean I'm less of a, of a risk for insurance. I'm not going to necessarily burn my house down any quicker. It's a, it's, a, it's a sloppy way for the insurance industry to raise rates is what it is, right? I mean, it's not that I'm a bigger risk because I can't... Because you have what? Bad credit. Not bad credit, just worse credit. Because well, I think I think the yeah, but I think the logic there on uh, the insurance is that maybe you won't. Uh, yeah, Sharon said most employers also pull credit, which is true. Yeah, and and that's again, you now you're not making well, as much. Well, let's let's th look at it this way. So if you got really poor credit, okay, you obviously don't pay your bills, so you're not concerned about that. So I, and this is maybe a stupid example, but you know you might you might tend to leave the stove on and not pay attention to that? Your house might burn down that way? I don't know. Right. I, what if you're a good cook? I've seen plenty of good cooks that can't count. I don't know. I'm just saying. I don't know. But here, I did want to share this. Okay, so getting back to the cancellation, uh, I've got I've got a, a graph here that I printed out, so i got to share it or else I'll just throw it away and not use it. But <laughs> uh, So 3% down, the average looks like it's about 11 years, or let's say about uh, 10 years before the mortgage insurance mm -hmm. falls off. With 5% down, we're looking at about uh, 8 to 9 years. With 10% down, about 6 years. Okay? So, that'll give you an idea. From 6 to 10 years, depending on the down payment, 10 to, or, or 3 to 10%. Okay? Right. 6 to 10 years is how long it'll take to automatically fall off. Well, and we're still talking about the original value. Now, okay? what about, you know, I had read too when we were preparing for the fact that if I convert my home to rental use, if I if I go from owning my house, I sell my house, but instead of selling it, I, I don't sell my house. I buy another house, okay, and I convert it to rental use. That the lender, technically, if I tell them, most people don't tell. But if I did tell you, you could require that mortgage insurance hang on longer. That if that if you own it and it's now an investment property. Yes. Yeah, that just depends on the time that you have been in the house, but it is still going to be treated as your primary residence. So you still, uh, you still have the the benefits of the primary residence financing. Yes. Yeah, and uh, I know you're going to talk to us about what the CFPB says is the criteria in which yeah. they say must be done when that person is going to cancel it. Right, right. So you, and I the mean, CFPB you, you, is you, a. Consumer Financial Protection Board. Yes, uh, Bureau. We, they're they're a great Financial government Protection entity. Bureau. We created a whole litany of people. I hope Trump to, says <laughs> not not like to you take know, care of consumer finance, of which is managing our business. I mean, there are hundreds of thousands of dollars. All right. So what must be spent. done? You, you must request cancellation writing. Uh, you have to be current on your payments and good payment history, which that seems to make sense. Um, yeah, liens. you definitely have to pre prove you don't have any other liens on the home. I mean, you kind of know if you do or you don't. Yeah, some people act like Obviously. they don't. Um, and then you might have to get a, get an appraisal to change the value. Cause, now that cause is again, a big thing, right? Because again, they're looking at original value on this cancellation of mortgage insurance. And, and another thing, think about this: it is a profit center for the bank. What? Which one is the profit center? The mortgage insurance. Okay. Gotcha. Got. Is there a markup? No, but it's still it's still. Income generating revenue for the bank, so they're gonna, they're not gonna, you know, just cancel it because you you feel like it's <laughs> over eighty ah! percent. You know, you're gonna have to put some work into it when you when you That'd get around nice. to it, unless you get to that automatic cancellation point. So, I tell you, moving on, moving on. All right, listener or viewer or whatever you want to call it, question. Yeah. Hey, good one came in last week, and the question was. Insert in a situation where the homeowner is deciding between adding on to their existing home or buying a new one, what things should they consider? When I say a new one, I don't mean a new house. I mean just new to them. It could be a new house, but it could be a used house, if you will. Uh, a used house. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, came up, you know, we found <laughs> seven ways to know whether you should remodel and save because it, it's not just clear cut financial, right? Because what if you love your home, right? I, you love your area. You love that neighborhood. Yeah. Or, or, the, or the kids are in a certain school system and you don't want, you, you maybe you got five or six years left of school. They've already spent, you know, seven, eight years in the school system. So why would you move them now? Uh, you look at Oak Mountain, right? There's no more land in Oak Mountain yeah. to buy. Right. You're stuck with an existing inventory that is very limited. 
So it may not be a good thing if you have to be in that school system. Or you could be also, you know, in an area where, you know, um, you just love the people you're with. Yeah. Your neighbors. Uh, that that's a reason to stay in it uh, and just remodel. But the, here's the big one. I mean, I, I see it all the time with folks asking about it. But can they budget realistically? Right? Oh, I don't think. I, I was watching HGTV, and I don't think it'll be more than 42000 <laughs> yeah. for for an eight-story building to go up. Right? Is that realistic? No, it's not realistic. The question is, do they have they really talked to a real contractor? You know, like Jay Williams at Build Tech. He's not going to be the cheapest. He's not going to be the most expensive. But he's going to be just right, right? Because you're going to get it built right to code and job well done. But the question is, can he do it for 42? I probably not, you know. Hey, Lindsay. Yeah, well, the thing is... Uh you know, you gotta you gotta think about what you want in the house and why Absolutely. are you moving. Like, is it is it gonna cost you uh, just as much to go buy that house um, that that it would to put put it in the house, or do you not have the cash to put it all in the house? Because 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 realistically, if you got a fifty thousand dollar pool, let's say it's gonna cost you fifty thousand dollars cash out of your account, right, to go put the pool in. Oh, absolutely. It's not gonna cost fifty grand to go buy the other house because you get away with five or ten percent down right so in some situations like that it might be cheaper to go buy the new house or i'm not I'm, I'm sorry not cheaper but less cash out of pocket less cash out of hand right to go buy that other house rather than taking the money mm -hmm. to actually do the changes that you want right right, Does right. That make sense? oh absolutely you know and the next one would be are you looking for more room or are you looking for more rooms right in other words i have a box my house is a box if you will I can create more room possibly with existing space. I just got to knock that wall down and I got I can reconfigure. But if I'm looking to create the same amount of box and add bedrooms, I'm probably not going to get I'm probably going to have to move out from there and I to make the box bigger. It's going to be far more expensive. Yeah. I may need to just move on and get cuz one thing that has been really interesting, uh Dan White, how are you? I hope you're doing well out in LA. I think you're in LA now. Um Anyway, uh, you know, the, the question is, what's more cost affordable? Because construction costs have not gone back down. Uh, yeah. As gas prices rise, think of how much of, of the construction industry has products like asphalt shingles that are petroleum-based. Yeah. And gas prices are going yeah, up. Yeah, and speaking of construction prices, I mean, it might be something particular to your house that's kind of weird. Like, you're, you're saying it. I may have to move a wall or, or, you know, blow outside of my house to get more rooms. Or you may have a, a, a small backyard with hard ac with tough access, right? Mm -hmm. So getting up in there, getting equipment in there. I didn't think about that. That's to, true, too. To put that pool in is going to cost you a lot more. So a lot more than, than a regular. Well, and the other thing, access. too, is that I've seen so many people not get an architect or a designer because I don't want to spend an extra $75 hundred dollars two hundred dollars to see if my plan works because my my best friend susie says it'll work yeah right it, it may be worth you two hundred dollars before you uproot your whole life yeah to have a designer or a uh a uh um uh, what are you trying to get some more yacht i'm rock telling on? you i'm telling you look i, I know i know we're winding down we're, we're coming up on the last uh, little segment here and uh you know i did i did love the yacht rock yeah i'm was gonna... I was sitting there going what in the world um uh, the the next the next part is is your home too costly right yeah because a lot of folks can have a too high of a mortgage payment taxes are killing them um, my God the upkeep on some of these older homes yes that might be killing me and I can get into a similarly situated house in another neighborhood that's newer and actually be better than remodeling my current home yeah and sometimes in, in these older homes when you when you do the um remodels ah. and you run into older issues right like you might want to switch out she loves toto oh there you go a and their friend is a one of the drummers so you might oh that's awesome africa i love africa the I song know. yeah so i so, love the country too i'm or the yeah. kind i'm not trying to offend anybody right but i mean it, so if you if you're doing one of these right? simple remodels in an older house then once you open up a wall or you, you get under the kitchen sink and you got... You mean the floor joists is yeah, rotted? Yeah, all kinds of stuff, right? So those kind of 
changes to the project could make it more costly than you were planning on and maybe not worth it. Absolutely. And then the next step would be, you said costly, I said time. Costly, time. No, uh, it can take... <laughs> you like yeah, it, huh? That's good. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, where would you go during these renovations, right? Yeah. Are you going to live with your mother-in-law? I room. don't know. Just go to the living room. All right? I don't know. You know, so get on, get on the how much is it going to cost? To, to actually the ancillary cost. Sure, you can afford the hard cost, but when they want you out, I mean, have you ever been in a house when they're redoing hardwood floors? One or two things are gonna kill you, the dust or the fumes. Yeah. So you're, you're out of the house, That's you know? True. So uh, think about that. And then, um, you know, what is the ROI? We talked about it two shows ago when we talked about renovation costs. What gave you the most bang for your buck? Yeah. Is there gonna be in that remodel? Yeah. Yep. A ROI. Yep. And, and part of that is going to be like, how much pleasure do you get out of it? Uh, and we've mentioned this a couple weeks ago too. You know, don't do these things right before you move and then you don't get to enjoy them. You know, do them while you're going to be in the house for five or six years. Maybe that offsets some of the cost. Well, I'm going to get to enjoy this pool. I'm going to get to enjoy the kitchen or, uh, you know, we're going to spend time in this master bathroom now. So maybe, you know, $20,000 on the master bathroom doesn't sound so ridiculous anymore. And, and, right? and believe me, it's harder. And if you're watching this and you're a first-time home buyer in your 20s, I get it. You don't have a lot of money, right? Yeah, and you're not worried about yeah. upgrading a master bathroom or a kitchen or a pool. I get it. And don't do it because you're going to overextend yourself. Yeah. Right? you you got plenty of time. Yeah, kind save, of. save um, that money. And then, you know, the other thing is, would you be over-improving for the particular neighborhood? Yeah. Definitely have to think about that. I mean, because you, you got to think about resale value. Whenever you, from from the time you buy the house till you sell it, obviously mm -hmm. you're thinking about resale value. You don't want to buy the most mm -hmm. expensive house in there. You don't want to overbuild, like you're saying, and and be the most expensive because when they come to do appraisals and when they come to sell the house, right? Yep. Uh, you're going to be compared to everything around you, and if there's if there's no other house with, uh, you know, with pink flamingos in the front yard and, and the, oh, phenomenal. you know, whatever, then, then you can't give any value to it. Well, you know, here's the one thing is about appraisers. They really don't give a rip about, I mean, here's the thing. Everybody wants to go, Oh, I'm getting dollar for dollar. And they're following the appraiser around going, look at what I did. Look what I did. Look what I did. He doesn't, and here's my receipt he, for this. Yeah. Here's my receipt he doesn't for that. care. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he just carried, he does not care that it's level eight granite. Yeah, it's a market level value. Level eight granite is the same as level one granite to an appraiser. Yeah. Believe me, we deal yeah. with that all the time. Yeah. And those, those high dollar fancy, uh, maybe bamboo wood oh. floors. Oh, man. Oh, oh. yeah. Impact yeah, resistance. Yes. Actually, not bamboo, but but you know what I mean? Oh, it's, it's so good, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I spent <laughs> 70 grand on those hardwood floors. Yeah, man. that's brilliant. You're yeah. an idiot. <laughs> You're an idiot. Uh, now, talk to me real quick, though, about yeah. the financing aspects. If, if somebody's trying to decide between these two things, is it going to be easier to obviously buy a new house and sell the old one financing-wise, right? Yeah, probably. What's I mean, going to have to happen to be able to thing, finance that remodel? The biggest thing is on finance of the remodel, you got to look at your – what. What are the terms on your first mortgage? Because you might be able to take cash out, but the interest rates are going to be a little bit worse. But you could maybe do a cash out refinance to finance some of these and things. And would that finance the whole mortgage? Yeah, you're redoing the whole mortgage. So let's say your current first mortgage is at 3.75. Josh Prisma. Yeah, so if you're at 3.75 and then you're going to have to refinance it five and a quarter, then obviously, is that making sense? No. Maybe. Maybe. Well, yes, but... But but my question though is is that if I'm refinancing this whole thing, but what if I'm not refinancing? Is a construction loan ever the the way to go? Uh, a construction loan can be depending. Because what on if I don't the, have enough equity? Depending on the size of the job, but the construction loan is, is typically going to take over the first as well. So if, if it's you, the same thing as a refinance. Yeah, pretty much. Um, now you can do equity lines. Though those are always an option, depending on. And again, it depends on the numbers. If you've got a four hundred thousand dollar mortgage and you're doing forty thousand dollars worth of work, the math is not going to work because you've got you're sacrificing the low rate on a big mm -hmm. loan versus taking forty thousand dollars out. If you have a hundred thousand dollar loan at three point seven five, but you need four hundred thousand, yeah, yeah, then obviously yeah. it makes sense to to redo the whole thing. Right. So again, a lot of things to think about, a lot of numbers. I would say. For the most part, I, I think most people would probably look at like an equity line or some type of... Yeah, I mean, one of my biggest concerns is when people take that whole... They, they saved up a ton of cash in, in real cash in the bank and then go plow it into their house. 
I see the house as an investment, but I also don't think it's your best spot for your money because if we see housing appreciating at 2%, 3% with inflation, which historically would be good, that's not the best place for your money. Uh, it's, it's, not, it's not at all financially you're not going to win that game because your house is going to appreciate. The value is going to go up or down regardless of how much you owe. So you have an investment the day you get the keys. And you're going to make money on it or you're going to lose money on it regardless of the balance of the mortgage, right? So putting the sinking or I'm sorry, investing this money into your home is, is going to be really driven by personal uh, enjoyment out of the upgrades that you do. Right. In my opinion. Right. You got a question for you. Structural loans or equity lines of credit all for remodels. No, we do not do the construction loans. We've got a, a local bank that we work with on that. And the equity lines, uh, obviously, obviously we, you have, do. we have a local bank we work with. Oh, do you that. don't do those either? No, we don't do those either. Well, yeah, I learn something new every day. Uh, yeah, we just we just refinance the first mortgage. He can definitely get you in touch with somebody yeah. good, though. Yeah, but we refer that out. And, Carrie and then, Ballinger. Like on the construction loans, then we'll come back and do the... Permanent finance, and once you oh, is that what happens? Yeah. Okay, so once once you get it, because I knew you loop back somehow, but yeah, I, typically the construction loan is going to be a six to nine month deal. It's a short term loan. Oh, not with Mark Wood. He knows how to do it. <laughs> and then, so we we would do the permanent financing on the back of that. Carrie, how's the wedding planning? She's getting ready. Her her oldest son's getting married. Well, planning. You need, you need to get him onto the yacht rock. Hey, I'm into yacht rock, Carrie. Do you know about yacht rock? Uh, it, it's oh, incredible. Man. I mean, no, she, listen, this lady's the biggest Poison fan. Oh, here's Toto yeah. right here, oh, Rosanna. Toto. Who doesn't love Rosanna? Right. Oh, yeah. Love it. Hey, Yacht Lock Review down at Avondale, June 3rd. Great band. Yeah. Can't wait to see them. Let's see. Oh, what are you doing? Fleetwood Mac. Fleetwood next. Mac. Oh, Michael McDonald. Zach. Yes. Red. Michael McDonald. Hey, the man's got a voice, doesn't he? Man. Zach, you saw uh, Yacht Rock Review, didn't you? Up at a bar in Nashville, I believe. Um, Predators tonight, by the way. The Preds. Hey, NHL, getting big. St hey, Steely you know Dan. You know what's great about some of these old old, this is old music is the long intros. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. They, <laughs> they don't just, have those they, anymore. Zach Brown might be, yeah. or somebody like that, but they're not going to get on the radio. Yeah. The long uh, intros and the long uh, guitar solos, the drum solos. <laughs> Go Preds. That's awesome. Zach. Uh, man, I never thought I'd see you as a uh, hockey fan, but the Preds, man, what's up with hockey? I, I, let me say this. Nothing's more exciting than playoff hockey. In a, NBA stinks. Yeah, I actually went up to Nashville and watched one of the Predators games live, and it was awesome. Hey, the, except for the other day, little Lady Annabellum forgot the words to the national anthem, but, hey. That's, um, usually, that's usually downer. Now, I do, I do enjoy... Absolutely. The whole Thriller album, wasn't it, Corey? Now, I am, I am enjoying the NBA playoffs, okay? I'm not gonna lie to you. And Le LeBron the NBA. came in and swept the Raptors. I don't. LeBron. I don't usually LeBron. Watch who? Any regular season stuff, but I mean it's pretty impressive for the four Wait. seed come in and sweep the one. Zach, Zach, one question. He's in Nashville. Did that not tick you off in the Central Time Zone, like 9:30 games? I mean, there were 9:30 at night. I mean, what are you supposed to wait till? You know, I mean, you're supposed to stay up all night. Your kids aren't watching. Man. That would that drove me nuts. You yeah, couldn't sports, watch any of it. They don't. They don't care about your sleep. Well, I don't care about the West Coast. They're all stuck. They all start. Hey, late. but here's the thing. I, and, and no, no, you hit on something. What? It's like seventy percent of all viewers. Kenny Loggins. Oh, who doesn't love Kenny? Right? Who doesn't? Pooh Corner or whatever, right? Uh, but you, I saw a stat that like seventy percent of the viewers are east of the Rockies for hockey for anything, right? Of the viewing public. Oh yeah. East of the Rockies. Okay. So why in the heck are we starting a playoff game at 9.30 Central Time? For God's sakes. Oh, no, you need to call somebody. I'm not calling call ESPN. Somebody ESPN. They are whack. ESPN's wackadoodles. They've called and they Disney. Need, and they need to work on their... Uh, Disney stock. Their commercial Thanks to ESPN. Break. The commercial breaks on DirecTV now? Oh, my God. They are killing me. Killing me with the... Jay says, the Toto's music. drummer plays for Steely Dan. Now that... Is a great fact of the day. That's a great factoid, right? I bet everybody's going to leave here and go get a Yacht Rock. Playlist. Oh, yeah. The Yacht Rock is, is the new thing. We started it. Uh, just kidding, but we'll call your claim. Zach, Zach, that's awful. I mean, how about when people people work for a living? I, bet, I get you on, on Saturday night 
fine. Have a late game as you want because Zach Hightower is going to be having a cold beer and watching hockey late into the evening. Yeah. But on Tuesday, he's got to go to work. They don't care. Monday night football. I mean, they ruined Tuesday, right? Yeah, yeah well, there's a lot of things the NFL ruined, right? Huh. They ruined themselves, but, you know, hey. But the Preds, I mean, I've never seen This is crazy. <laughs> he says I need to wear my captain. Hey, yes, for, in honor of Yacht Rock, I will do that. My captain's hat. There you go. Signed by Captain Kate. Along with the Morgan's Bank shirt. Oh, there's uh, Rachel Ryan R. Kelly. Yeah, Ryan Hartman. Uh, what do you think, Zach Ryan Hartman fan? Uh, well, you know, Carrie Underwood's husband is playing for the Preds. Not playing tonight, apparently. Uh, apparently out for this game. I don't know. Yeah, Carrie Underwood. I mean, are you shocked that she she got a, a, no, I think a that's rich great. Kid? I learn something new every day. He was a good ad. Yeah. Ryan Hartman. Man, you're talking to two hockey guys, obviously, right? Yeah. These guys know I mean, what they're we, talking about. I mean, if you if you wanted to talk about you know LeBron beating the Raptors, I know about that, but... Who's having surgery? I guess that would be Carrie Underwood's husband. Mike somebody. Uh, Mike Underwood? Mike Underwood. Yeah. <laughs> Mike Underwood. Oh, oh God. Good. Well, man, another great show down. Listen, and you guys you guys tune in to the Yacht Rock. and uh, Get you a playlist. Yeah, check in on, on us every Thursday. Fisher, Mike Fisher. Mike Fisher. Not Mike Underwood. Good show, guys. Every Thursday. See Come back Corey. see us. They all know it. Hey. Yeah, Rachel's good on see it, too. You. Next Thursday. Four o'clock, we'll That's be right. there. With Kenny Loggins. See you later. Little Yacht Rock. That's right. Oh, yeah. Love it. See ya.